Ohio's two senators, Democrat Sherrod Brown and Republican J.D. Vance, are proposing new federal railroad safety regulations following last month's toxic train, toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. This comes as the president meets with Senate Democrats on Capitol Hill. Here he is with Majority Leader Chuck Schumer after addressing House Democrats last night at a conference in Baltimore. Joining us now from the White House, ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. She's been following this for us. Let's talk about where this is going. It started with President Biden, right? He seemed to be in uh, campaign mode uh, yesterday. Uh, he, All right, so we've got it. live pictures. Yeah, Elizabeth, I see that we have live pictures now uh, side by side there with uh, Chuck Schumer, I see on his left. Um, I'll. Okay, Senator Blumenthal on the on the right there as he as he's leaving. All right, let's talk about this uh, and and where things stand. Right. So here, Kira, you can see the president taking his message to Senate Democrats today. The White House says the conversation was about how. Democrats can tout the historic investments that they've made together. So focusing on areas where they passed bipartisan legislation already, things like the bipartisan infrastructure law, the CHIPS Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, and then future efforts too. And we saw this similar message that the president made when he was speaking to Democrats in the House last night. Really a lot of what the president has been saying without, of course, formally announcing that he is running again is let's try to get out and send a message that we've had these victories in Congress while also sending a message that there is still work to do. And that's a lot of what we expect the president had in this conversation with Democrats over on Capitol Hill today, Kira. Well, it sounds like the House Ethics Committee has some more work to do. It just announced it's establishing an investigative subcommittee to probe allegations made against George Santos. What's the latest there? Right. So this is just out. We're, we are getting word that the House Ethics Committee is now going to launch this subcommittee to look into Congressman George Santos, of course. This is the embattled congressman from New York who is facing all sorts of allegations of fraud. He has been accused of lying on multiple fronts. We know that he has fabricated large parts of his resume, his education, his work experience, other parts of his background. So this was a unanimous vote by this uh, committee in the House to establish a subcommittee. They make a point of saying just because there will be an investigation does not mean that he's guilty. But, of course, this does escalate the, the questions into Santos among many of the questions that we've already seen, Kira. And let's not forget, what was it, uh, allegations and pictures coming forward that he was um, uh, participating in drag queen shows in Brazil, I think it was. Let's not forget that. That just adds to the interesting <laughs> list of uh, experiences that he says he's had or not had. Um, all right, let's talk about the new railroad safety regulations now and what's in this bill. And how do you think it would change the way railroads run across the nation as, unfortunately, uh, we have covered most recently uh, two crashes, the one uh, toxic, unfortunately, crash that happened uh, in East uh, Palestine, Ohio. Right. So this is one of those kind of rare places where you see bipartisan support on Capitol Hill. So there's legislation introduced by the senators from Ohio, Brown and Vance. And the goal here is to really shore up safety on railroads. It would do things like uh, create new guidelines for transporting hazardous material, require two-person crews. It would increase Department of Transportation fines for infractions. Uh, it would amount to more inspections on railroads. And the White House has made clear that this is something that it supports this effort, Kara. You know, we've seen this kind of focus on rail safety, these incidents making very clear that even if there are not injuries involved, the fallout could last for years. And that's something that the senators from Ohio made clear in this bipartisan push. And it looks like it will garner significant support as of now uh, over on the Hill. And finally, we are learning that the Justice Department now uh, says that former President Trump should not be immune to civil lawsuits that hold him accountable for the January 6th attack on the Capitol. What do we know about this? You know, of course, the president, former President Trump, has made that argument that he should be shielded from these investigations because of executive privilege. And now what we know is that the Justice Department is saying that he should not be entitled to immunity, at least from civil lawsuits trying to hold him accountable when it comes to the January 6th Capitol riot. So the Department of Justice making the point to say that normally there is this executive privilege that would shield presidents, former presidents, from lawsuits, but the allegations in these lawsuits against Trump for incitement violence on January 6th amount to a rare exception, they say. This is just part of this ongoing saga, this legal battle between the Justice Department and the former president when it comes to the role he may have played in January 6th. And it looks like the Justice Department trying to ensure that he 
could potentially face these charges when it comes to those January 6th uh, incidents, Kira. All right, Elizabeth Schulz, a busy day at the White House, I see. A lot going You've got on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, you got it all covered for us. Appreciate it. All Thank right. Thank you, Kira. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.